all civilians, regardless of race, color, or creed. They fear black, though. Shaking in their boots during traffic stops. Hiding behind shields, directives, 38s of blocks, using live bodies for target practice. Trained peace officers increase body count nationwide. Shooting first, asking pertinent questions later, diminishing one group's classification into 16 letters of the alphabet, connected behind two vertical lines that link with two on the horizon. But we can't see the sun. There's too much darkness in our background. Survivors show reverence for the dearly departed with pound signs in cyberspace or by marching on city streets stained with their brothers' and sisters' blood. The same way villagers mourn their kin in deserts of Alkebulon and slaves sang redemption songs on red clay roads in cotton fields down south. Not much has changed in black history. Symbols precede names remembered from the past as the struggle continues adding more in the present. We sing songs from the 1900s that are still applicable in 2017. Deep in my heart, I do believe that we shall overcome someday. And we will as soon as all black lives matter, with the phrase receiving a dishonorable discharge for early retirement. <laughs> this next piece is Black Girl Magic. I learned Black Girl Magic from one of the best. A Choctaw call bearer from the bayous of Louisiana. She turned shit into sunshine. Knew how to stretch a dollar from 15 cents. Her third eye protected her loved ones from harm, but karma handled business anytime someone crossed her. Fluent in Geechee, I never heard her cuss, but inherited potty mouth from Grandma Booker on the other side of the family. Mama would use her own language to instruct haters to kiss her where the fucking sun don't shine. <laughs> Cut I sut sut, mut yut, a sut sut. Translation, kiss my ass. She was the sweetest rose. Pass her thorns off to her only girl child, giving me the juju early. Teaching me to kill with kindness. If I don't have anything nice to say, don't say shit. Turn the other cheek. Use my brain, not my fist or, or weapon to get my adversaries together. I came into this world alone, so don't depend on anyone but my fucking self. Proactivity trumps reactivity. The best defense is offense. Trust is earned. Keep your close circle small with your enemy at bay. The right hand don't need to know what the left hand is doing, and what happens at our address stays at our address. She passed down three F's I should use before, during, even after jumping the broom. Friend them, feed them, fuck them. And in that order. <laughs> she told me if a man hits me once, that weak punk bitch will damn sure do it again. So don't walk away. Run, baby, run. This black girl works magic every damn day. I use my powers in the office, ignore lying, wrinkly, old pale face snitch bitches, or as mama would call them, but I cut to cuts. <laughs> I'm always the last grape on the vine. Avoiding jail time by clocking the dude, then walking away instead of dead that ass after he put his hands on me. I leave negativity behind as I push forward. Choose my inner circle of trust wisely. I work magic every time I bring home the bacon, fry it up in a pan, never letting him forget he's a man, cause I'm a woman, raised by an enchantress, covered by the blood of my ancestors, strong enough to stand alone, smart enough to live drama free, confidently enjoying just being me, appreciating who I used to be, 
loving who I am right now, anxious to find out who Rose will become as she continues to grow up from the concrete. <laughs> A rose grew up from the concrete. <laughs> Burst through earth like a phoenix, standing tall, poised perfectly to flourish in sun or shade. Her beauty seared into psyches of creatures that supposedly find love at first sight. Petals soft as cotton emit fragrant aromas, summoning visitors that bear peace offerings to woo secrets away from inside the rosebud's wall. Great pretenders fake the funk, exposing their true colors. After the rose blooms, the flowering is innocence by clipping just above that fifth leaf. Roses eventually wilt if left unattended on a shelf, but bounce back resilient to breathe new life on the vine. Thorns hidden in the bush prick unwelcome guests, never to be forgotten, demanding respect as thieves don't ever leave their presence unscathed. Even beautiful flowers possess defense mechanisms, which is why I don't cut roses from the garden anymore. They too deserve a chance to flourish happily ever after. So that was my naughty doppelganger, one single rose. No, my nice doppelganger. So now you'll be hearing from my naughty doppelganger. She goes by the name of Pearl, <laughs> and this is Wet Dream. Every time I close my eyes, a subconscious freak creeps into my dreams. First, I see his handsome, smiling face. Then I'm engulfed in his arms, locked up tight in his embrace as I wait impatiently to feel him deep inside me. Spooning as missionaries, images of sensual kisses on both sets of lips fill my mind. I feel myself pressed into the mattress, smothered under his smooth, buttery chocolate skin. My fingernails digging into that hairy, beating chest as I catch perfectly timed long strokes, then throw the snapper right back at him. <laughs> our nipples align until our tongues make them tingle. Nibbling drives us wild. He's got me so hot. My coochie burns at the thought of doggy style with him gripping me from behind, causing simultaneous convulsions. I shake it like a salt shaker. <laughs> Riding the surfboard as he whips my ass, bringing the reverse cowgirl up to speed. I'm the sole heir to his throne. A big girl built to withstand every rock hard blow to my flesh. We beg each other for more, screaming loudly with passion, kicking, spinning, taking on 69 for the hundredth time. My booty butt cheeks frame his face. His love muscle disappears between my jaws, but he makes sure I squirt first before returning the favor, shrinking from big dog to little fella. Love double dribbles down our throats. Another failed attempt at creating new life, so we must try again. I awake, wiping a creamy substance from my lips. Roll over to find he's not there, but his side of the bed soaked and cum. I'm somewhat satisfied, yet pissed off that this was only a wet dream that felt so damn real. A sister can't wait to fall asleep again. But it would be in my best interest to stay woke so that I can turn this fantasy into a reality. And the final piece is called Pony Ride. Unbuckle your belt. Unass those jeans. I'll drop your drawers, baby, cause it's ladies' choice tonight. <laughs> I'll be taking control of this ride, mounting the pony with no hands, 
rocking the horse back and forth, round and round, up and down your slippery soaked pole. Ass popping, dropping, locking on top of the saddle while you dig down my throbbing tight, dripping wet snatch. My G spot tingles blissfully with your wildly untamed bed. Long, hard, thick, fast, pony jolting inside the sweet succulent hollows of my skin. This rodeo is insane, but I'm balanced securely until I get that nut. Now, take me on a slow roll with deep, penetrating, stimulating, sensual thrusts. I'll be turtle if you'll pull my hair. Then let's kick it back up a notch. Breastfeed, catching the girls in your mouth if you can while they beat your face. In our race to cross the finish line, whisper sweet nothings in my ear planting your seeds in Rose's garden. We'll share a creamy yet copious pride. Our sense of touch blown away with screams of passion. After dismounting, let's take a short break. Then I'm coming to claim another of your senses, licking you dry, sucking the motherfucking speech out of you. What? <laughs>